These videos show people in the throes of a terrible drug, one that can make them hyper, paranoid, delusional, and violent. With the video and pictures, King created an educational program called Faces of Meth. His goal? To stop families from being torn apart by the drug. These people have lives, they have families. They're often someone's son or daughter, mother or father, brother or sister. These are real people with real problems, and they're part of our community. King has seen firsthand how meth can destroy a promising young life. I went to school with this guy. He's a pretty good guy. He's been to jail 44 times here. That's not counting uh, the other places he's been. His name is Kobe Kempe, and his story is typical of a meth user. Back in high school, Kobe seemed to have a bright future ahead of him, but meth cut it short. I was an athlete. I guess you could call me a jock. I had a lot of friends. Um, <clears throat> I had a really nice car. Popular? Yeah, I was popular. During his high school years, Kobe began trying drugs, including cocaine. One day, he went looking to buy a hit of coke, but the dealer offered him something else, something that would change his life forever. She had this stuff called crystal meth. I never even heard of it, never even heard that name. Kobe tried it before a big track meet and experienced a high unlike anything he'd felt before. It's almost like you have superhuman powers. It's almost like you feel like you're a, a different entity. You're, you're all of a sudden more than you were. You know, you're just better. Kind of like you won the lottery. You never have to work again. Your endurance is just off the map. Meth was working its magic, increasing Kobe's heart rate and making him feel stronger and more focused. And I remember after I consumed the meth, the first event was a shot put, and I threw the shot put, and I set the school record at that meet for the shot put. So the first time you did meth, you set the shot put shot, record? Shot put record for my school. But over the years, the more he used the drug, the more he needed it. He dropped everything to get his hands on more meth. Instead of becoming the successful athlete or businessman he might have been, he racked up dozens of arrests over the course of 20 years. What is that like to have a son, star football player, star track runner? In the beginning, it was devastating. But then towards the end, when he was out on the streets and he was half dead, <laughs> it was a relief to know he was in jail. Isn't that Knowing incredible? Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. You were happy when the, when the police called and said he's in jail. You knew where he was. Because you, you know he's not going to get killed out there. Or he's not going to uh, kill, kill somebody right else. Mm -hmm. Kobe is fortunate in one way. He has survived his meth nightmare physically intact. But other victims of the drug are not so lucky. They must live with permanent damage that's much more than skin deep. Deputy Brett King of the Multnomah County Sheriff's Office is taking us inside a Portland jail to meet an inmate, one of many whose body and mind have been damaged by meth. Okay, ladies, we have cameras going inside this housing unit. If you do not want to be on camera, do not be in the view of the camera. How, how long have you been? I've been clean for seven months. How long did you use meth? On my life. I really wish we were doing this in a, in a di different room. Okay, you're uncomfortable? Here. Very, very. Yeah, we can. Are you surprised by how many people in this jail uh, are in here with meth-related charges? Not at all. 
because it's a powerful drug. It makes people really like brave. They can do anything on meth. You know, it's almost like a magical drug to people. And you know, they feel strong. They they can do anything, and they they believe their own psychosis. Because I believe I believe mine for the longest time until I looked at myself. I used to think I was very pretty, and I don't see that anymore. It's, it's done it real quick to me. One minute I was on it for a week, the next you know, here I am five years later. That quick. Um, I'm ashamed. And I just, I don't know. Meth can transform the appearance of users. While under its spell, many feel a crawling sensation and begin to pick at their skin, creating open sores. And that's not all meth does. Julie is experiencing one of the peculiar side effects of meth use. She's losing her teeth. I don't look like Julie anymore. My jawline right here is, is basically deformed. So does that hurt right now when I tap mm -hmm. on it? OK, how about this one? Ah. Mm -hmm. This kind of tooth decay is so common among meth addicts, it even has a name. Meth mouth. Because there's teeth missing in the back, you're doing a lot of your tooth with your front teeth. Because these teeth are basically working in a way that they were not necessarily designed for. Julie's mouth should look like this. But meth destroys teeth by impeding the flow of saliva. Because many addicts don't drink enough fluids, bacteria, as well as natural acids, can accumulate, eating away at enamel and gums. Julie has lost 12 teeth. And there's another reason for meth mouth. Meth addicts often don't brush their teeth or visit the dentist. Whatever money they have typically goes to buy more drugs. Something you gotta have versus dental care. Dental care goes by the wayside very They can't pay for meth and for their teeth. Right. It's, it's, a, it's a cost allocation. They'd you know, rather have the meth than have their teeth eh? Right. All of it at the end, you're loose. You, you're what we call you're burnt. <laughs> you just don't get it. It's a psychosis.